Hey guys, time for my NXT review from March 13, 2013. This is a very interesting episode, uh, to say the least. Uh, opening match, Cassius Ono against Derek Bateman. Um, this, you know what, this was, this was an okay match. It was an okay match. Um, Bateman had control for a little bit, but this was really all Cassius Ono. Um, and the match comes when Bateman goes to the ropes, but Ono hits him with a big boot, gets the three count and the victory. Now, after the match, um, Ono locks in a cravat, a cravat stretch, which he holds on for a long time. Well, then here comes William Regal from the broadcast booth, because he and Ono, they've been having this thing for about the last two months now. And Regal pulls Ono off of Bateman. So, you know, there's a little bit of a shock from Ono. And Ono, or uh, Regal, checks on Derek Bateman. Well, Regal gets up. Ono's about ready to hit him. And then all of a sudden, Regal gives him this left jab that knocks Ono out of the ring. And he's just in complete shock. And Regal's in complete shock like, Oh my God, did I just do that? And it just sold really good. It was just, it just was done well in that. And I really hope, you know, this becomes a more of a storyline. Um, to the back, Bo Dallas, um, he says that Bray Wyatt has cost him the NXT Tag Team titles. And they shot at the NXT title. And tonight, Bray's going to feel what he felt. So before we go to our next match, uh, Tony Dawson's with William Regal. And Regal apologizes for what he did, saying how unprofessional it was. And he just apologized. So our next match. Emma against Summer Rae. Now, I will give credit here. Emma looked a lot better in this match than she did with Oksana. She looked a lot better. And Summer Rae looked good in this match, too. I'm not going to lie. Um, so, it's a somewhat decent match. You know, it's not really that bad of a match. Um, so... It's a good back and forth, and the end of the match comes when Summer Rae hits this roundhouse kick that knocks Emma down, gets the three count and the victory. Well, all of a sudden, here comes Paige. She's running down the rampway, and as soon as Summer Rae sees her, she, she runs out of the ring, through the crowd, and Paige is back, and she looked good. She looked real good. So we go to the back again, and this time it's Adrian Neville. And Neville says that he wants a piece of the Wyatt family. And he says to Dusty Rhodes, I don't care who you pick. I want a shot at them, and I want to beat them. So after a commercial break, we come back, and Matt Stryker, for some reason, is there with Big E Langston. And this promo just was really confusing. I can't say anything. <sighs> so we go to the next match. Bray Wyatt against Bo Dallas. Now, Bray Wyatt just looks great. It can... To be honest, how much longer does Bray Wyatt have to wait to get back to WWE? Because he's ready. He is ready. He is set to go. I don't care if you're putting him as a wrestler or as a manager or both. Bray Wyatt is ready. He's ready to go. And this match shows, you know, the sadistic side of Bray Wyatt. And he's so damn athletic at 295 pounds. He just is. It's incredible. Um... But this is a you know an okay match. The end comes when Bo Dallas hits that belly to belly suplex on Bray Wyatt. It almost looks like he just threw him on that belly to belly suplex. Gets the three count in the victory. After that, uh, 
Luke Harper and Eric Rowland come out. They attack uh, Bo Dallas, and Bray Wyatt attacks Bo Dallas as well. So, after that, um, we come back, and Ricardo Rodriguez introduces Alberto Del Rio. So he comes down to the ring, and Alberto Del Rio, he's in sports pants, sports jacket, you know, it looks like he's ready to wrestle, but he doesn't. So he says how he's thankful for the NXT, and if it wasn't for these fans, he wouldn't be where he went, where he is. And he says that there is somebody in the back that will one day be the WWE champion or the world heavyweight champion. Well, here comes Antonio Cesaro. Cesaro comes out. And he says that he is the best champion of everybody in the WWE. And what a better way to prove it than by having a match champion versus champion with Alberto Del Rio right now. Well, all of a sudden, it's Dusty Rhodes. And he goes, now hold on there, hold on there, Antonio Cesaro. First off, Mr. Del Rio is a guest of NXT. So, you from Sweden, and, and that just gets a confusing look, and Cesaro's like, I'm from Switzerland! And Dusty's like, Switzerland, I, I'm sorry, I was looking at my watch. So, here's what's going to happen. The real's not going to wrestle. He is a guest here. But Cesaro, since you're from Switzerland, or Sweden, or wherever you're from, you're going to have a match tonight, baby. You're going to have a match right now. It's going to be a champion for the champion match. And you're going to face the NXT champion, Big E Langston. So Big E Langston comes out, and we have our featured match, Antonio Cesaro against Big E Langston. Um, okay, so apparently Dusty uh, thought that Cesaro was from Sweden, not from Switzerland. Um... And this is really a dominating match. Big E Langston is in control. But at the end, here comes Corey Graves. He runs into the ring and attacks Big E Langston. Match is over. Langston wins by disqualification. Well, then here comes Connor O'Brien. And the two of them are beating up Big E Langston. And he's knocked down. And that's it. That's your episode of NXT. Uh... It was okay. It wasn't as good as last episode, but this was an okay one. Um, but very interesting developments in some feuds. Glad to see Paige came back. Uh, Bray Wyatt's really starting to become a big factor in NXT. And Dusty Rhodes cannot tell the difference from Sweden and Switzerland. And that's my review of NXT.